All right, so we are in King's Race here in that final matchup. The numbers are, of course, not correct at the bottom. It is 0-0. Zero, zero. This is yeah, the first game that we see. <laughs> I was like, wait uh, a minute. <laughs> so we have the same comp from both the teams, not a surprise as well. This is a um, time trial dungeon, and they have been running the triple hunter comp in the time trial as well. And of course, these were our, our top two teams in time trials as well for King's Rest. So these are our two fastest teams overall in the tournament, as well as just fastest in time trials. So we know that both of these teams have what it takes in order to put the best time up on the board. Of course, Method EU posting a blazing fast sub 20 minutes in time trials. So we'll see if they're able to, they're going to be able to pull it off here in the grand finals on the best stage that the MDI has to offer. Yeah, Method EU already a little bit faster with their um, minions pull and the Shadow Melt coming out to get rid of those bolstered guardians. Now they immediately got rid of those minions and pulled two of the trash packs that spawned here immediately on top of each other. We see Perplex doing the exactly same thing. This pull is very difficult just because these mobs all have different kinds of HP pools, so bolstering is very dangerous, and then you have these witch doctors who constantly cast Deathly Chill, doing a huge amount of magic damage to the tank, if not interrupted. Fortunately, one of the best things that hunters have available is a very, very even cleave, which they can which they can focus on everything. And then you have one or two single target abilities that you can put a little bit of extra damage into the main target, right? That's the best thing that they have going on for them. So you can see just pretty much perfect bolstering management from both teams on that first pull. That being said, Method EU went for just a slightly larger pull and got more percentage out of their first pack. And they're just dealing with the bolstering way better so far. They only have this four pack to deal with, it looks like. Yeah, I think bolstering management is really going to be the one thing that will be the difference between Method U and Perplex here. The better you deal with bolstering, the less time you have to waste uh, dealing with the extra HP that the bolstering stacks apply to those mobs. And we see Method U uh, finishing off that last pack here, while Perplex, as you mentioned, just dealing with the other trash bag. And actually, both of them at 20% at the very exact same second. We see both of the tanks going backwards to pull those two guardians on top of the golden serpent we see them uh, do this kind of strategy just because they get extra damage from the hunters having three targets up uh, because of the uh, cooldown reduction on their cds and of course it is bolstering so they don't want to finish them off before the boss though yep i mean this is neck and neck already and i thought that i thought the method would be slightly in the lead just because of the way they pulled that first pack but like you said both of the trash packs going on at the exact same times for both for both of these groups and the pluses are even on just about the same percentage as well so this is really just going to come down to a dps competition in this particular instance right now and as we know both of these teams have top in players world-class players on their teams so it's just going to be exciting to see how close these teams are going to be and we saw a little inkling of that in the upper finals with these teams right they were within, within seconds of each other of each other in every single one of the dungeons yeah what a close series it was this upper final that they played before i really hope this one's going to be just as close and it looks like it's so far in this king's rest uh we did change the number now so it is a 19 they're playing they're not actually playing at 20 which is a, a mistake with the graphic it's the same level as all the other keys they've played before now method you slightly ahead on the boss but just I mean, it's not noticeable, barely. This is gonna be so close between those two, and all these small things will matter, like how you move from one trash pack to the other, how you use your life with potions. Um, just any small little second can matter, so it's gonna be so interesting between those two. Yeah, absolutely, and we know that both of these teams are just pretty much perfect with how they, they, go, they go for an execution. We've highlighted so many different times what these teams will do in order to make sure their movement throughout the dungeon is absolutely perfect. Not only how they're dealing with the trash, but making sure that their actual movement from pole to pole to pole is incredibly fluid, knowing when to use a light, those light foots, like you mentioned. And just in general, like th things like the freehold skip, right, where the rogue will be like, okay, boss is at 5%, I'm going to go ahead and run on, start the Trothak RP, and then meet up with the group by the time they do the next pull. Things like that are things that we saw Method EU and Perplexed when they were Abracadabra do first last year. These were the teams that set those standards, and to see them pull all together at the end of this expansion in this final season of the BFA MDI, this is pretty much as good as it gets for MDI right now. Yeah, and then we also see small adaptations as well from these teams from one tournament day to the other. We've seen some teams, they just stick to their initial strategy and they, they just go with it for the rest of the tournament. But we see Method EU and Perplex, both of them, they have an initial strategy for a specific dungeon. But if they see another team do something that they like, they will just adapt it and uh, put it into their strat or change their strategy completely if they think it's not good enough or it's not good enough to beat another team's strat. So I like that kind of thing coming out of Method U and Perplexed. 
Both of them are in this gauntlet area now that is not RNG on Tournament Realms. It will always be the top left trash pack first and then it will go counterclockwise. And I mean, you can just see how ridiculously close these teams are right now. The same things are happening at the same time. The animated guardians running at the same time. The second trash pack spawning within seconds of each other. And I'm sure these trash packs are going to go down probably within five to ten seconds of each other as well. These teams are just matched when it comes to skill and execution. And I mean, I just think that this is really what the MDI has to offer in terms of competition. Seeing teams at the top of their level executing this well is so fun, so exciting to see. I agree. Perplex, unfortunately, though, having a little bit of uh, trouble with those Guardians. They did bolster them quite a bit there, but thankfully managed to finish them off before the next trash pack spawned. This is really important because if you manage your bolstering on these Guardians and you already get the next trash group spawn uh, before you finish them off, then you need to either keep them alive until that trash pack is gone, otherwise you will bolster them with full HP, or uh, you bolster them, right? So you definitely um, want to make sure you manage this properly and Perplex did just barely manage to finish off the Guardians before the next trash pack spawned. Yeah, and, and, and it, w it would not surprise me to see pretty much the exact same strategy coming out from both teams here. If you look at the time trial times method, you had a 19.57, so just barely sub 20 minutes. But Perplex had a 20 minute and 14 second time, only 17 seconds slower than method EU. So I would be very surprised if there was actually any major differences in their strategy. I think we're probably going to see both of these teams go for four obelisks with the final boss, which definitely is scary. But we know that they're of the caliber to pull that kind of thing off. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure both of those teams are going to do that for Obelix strat, as you mentioned. Now, Perplex actually had the very first trash group of this gauntlet spawn two or three seconds earlier compared to Method, but Method managed to spawn this last trash group two to three seconds earlier. So Method, you slight advantage for this gauntlet here. They did finish off a little bit more efficiently, dealing with uh, bolstering more efficiently and just having more um, execution damage compared to Perplex. But it's just a couple of seconds. As you can see, Method U is moving on to the Machimba room now. And this Machimba room is also gonna matter quite a bit because of the bolstering management uh, can cost you so much time here. Yeah, absolutely. And both teams opt in to go for a very similar strategy here, pulling one half of the room with one of the constructs, focusing most of their single target damage onto that construct while slowly keep cleaving down the rest of the embalming fluids. But actually, I spoke too soon. Method EU is just pulling into this second pack here. Uh, I wonder... Oh, they had they had to go over there because of the because of the coffin placement, the, the sarcophagus placement. Unfortunately, they're really going to have to focus down this construct. A lot of single tar target damage needs to go out on both the skull and the X marker there. Otherwise, those embalming fluids health is going to get out of hand. And also, you have to realize that the bolstering is going to get pretty ridiculous here as well, because they're going to have two bolstering sacks on top of everything, and then it's going to exponentially advance further up when these embalming fluids start bolstering each other. So they have to worry about that. A little bit unfortunate for them, whereas Perplex has already dealt with their half of the room and is moving on to the second half here. Yeah, so this is one pull on Method U side versus two pulls on Perplex side. But because of the bolstering, like you mentioned, uh, both pulls seem to be pretty equal time-wise, as both of them are finishing up this pull in basically the same second. So uh, one pull versus two pull. In other dungeons, you would say, obviously doing it in one pull is much faster. But because of bolstering here, it's pretty equal in time. Method U actually taking longer to finish up their pull. Perplex uh, already engaging the boss here we will see them very likely do this um tomb strategy where everyone just clicks the tomb immediately at the same time to get the person out and then we will see the traps the hunter traps and the incaps coming out to see those skeletons once they spawn now we also see a construct of the bridge being pulled on the method use side yep the construct is coming and we've seen that purification beam absolutely mow people down unfortunately for a lot of teams, so we're gonna have to see how Method is planning on dealing with that. I don't think it's been pulled for Perplex, or if it has, we don't have a POV of it coming in. The, 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 the mummies have already been dealt with for Team Perplex, so it looks like they're through that portion of the fight. Uh, Method EU just now dealing with that portion of the fight. There is a mummy that's loose, but they, are, they do finally get some CC on it down by that middle coffin in the middle of the room, so they should be fine. Jimmy dropping incredibly low there on the Hunter. Fraggy Haunt is scary to see him go low, but Zelia is able to heal him back up. And it looks like they've just barely been able to stabilize, but they do have that mummy in the group. You can see it's marked with a skull. They're going to have to single target focus that down because of the amount of damage it does to the tank. You gotta remember, Majima the Embalmer does a lot of tank damage. There's a lot of just pure melee physical damage going on this warrior tank here. And getting that mummy down is gonna lower the intake that he's, that he's getting dealt here. Yeah, I mean, this is the exact same pool we've seen Self-Reliance do earlier, 
and they've wiped twice to this same pool just because of the huge amount of damage on the tank. Not only do you have to tank Machimba, which already does a lot of damage by itself, but you also have this uh, purification construct hitting you and the skeleton that not only d does it need to be tanked, but it also needs to be interrupted constantly by the hunters. You see the beam come out as well, doing huge amounts of damage to, the, to everybody, uh, if not dodge. And actually an AoE going out, thankfully Saelia did revival immediately as soon as that cast went off. But definitely want to make sure they interrupt all of them from now on, because now we don't have that revival from Saelia anymore. I, I wonder if they're pulling these, these mummies on purpose, right? Because they had this particular mummy CC'd in the middle of the room. Hold on here, now dropping incredibly low. It can't opt to take that purification when it's at 10%, but the purification construct does go down. That does mean the boss gets bolstered, unfortunately. But with the boss only at 5%, it shouldn't be that major of an issue as they cleave it down. Yeah, I, they did have that mummy CC'd in the middle of the room, but I wonder if they just cleaved it on top of the boss for that three target rapid reload so. cleave for the hunters yeah. that we keep talking about. Just a little bit more single target that's damage. The why, yeah. Because it all, all it needs to be is interrupted as long as now can tank it, right? As long as he survives the damage, he's definitely gonna be a damage increase. But because sometimes you really gotta think about it this way, because the more things you give uh, the people to handle, the more damage you're gonna lose. Even if they're really good players, and we know Method you are really good players, but if they have to interrupt and add constantly, they need to worry about a beam coming around, the tank needs to use the defenses properly to not die, you're just gonna lose a little bit of damage on everybody just because of the defensives and the control they need to pull out. Uh, maybe you just use one button wrong in one moment, and that's why I don't think this might be worth it. But Method you actually having Jinji go down, unfortunately. Yep, one death on the board from Method EU. They will be able to just res him out of combat here, but that is five seconds on the board for them. And when these teams have such similar potential in their maximum dungeon time, that five seconds is going to be a major factor, especially considering Perplexed is technically ahead in the dungeon right now. They're already engaging the third boss, and they're also that one percentage uh, of trash ahead of Method EU. So definitely in the driver's seat is Perplexed right now. Yeah, Perplexed are already fighting Kula um, on their set. They're on 81% trash. So they're going to be a little bit behind compared to Method U, who's dealing with this trash um, right now. They did close to the Brood, but very likely are going to shut them out off the aggro once it's get to that council fight as well on their side. So slight difference in trash between those two, but otherwise in the pure dungeon speed, Perplex is ahead right now as they're already on the boss. Oh yeah, uh, Method EU is now going for that trash pull here. They are skipping all of the trash. Looks like the skip went off perfectly. No deaths on the board, as you would expect from Method EU. And only just now engaging the council boss. Uh, at the same time, that Kula is just about to go down for Perplex. So they're about a third of this boss's HP behind on Tyrannical, which is a pretty significant amount of time. I I'd say probably in the realm of 40 to 45 seconds behind on this boss right now. Yeah, definitely. Oh, we see Divine Field here waiting for the next boss to spawn we saw. Um, he, he, one cool thing that you can do in this boss is actually drop boss combat, and then you can use a potion that will not trigger the... Uh, it will trigger the cooldown immediately if you use it in between bosses. If you use a Shadow Melt or a Faint Death or any sort of uh, combat dropping ability, and that's why we saw the Faint Death come out from the Hunters in between um, Kula and Zenazel here. So. Uh, slight optimization for DPS, getting an extra pot in without uh, triggering or with triggering the cooldown as well. Now, this one death we see on Method U side, even though it didn't cost them too much because it was at the end of the pack, it's still five seconds, right? And how close these teams are, it can really matter at the end. And I mean, when we're talking about how close they are, once again, not only the five seconds, but the cast time as well. Just the reawakened cast time from the Mistweaver Monk is probably another five to six seconds on the board. So probably 10 seconds for that death. Now, they have actually managed to catch up in pure single target damage here. Zen is otherwise down to 60% from Method EU, whereas I believe uh, when they pulled the boss, they were 85% behind on the boss, so now only 60% behind. Uh, catching up in single target damage is Method EU here. Yeah, I mean, Method EU's players, they were actually really known uh, to be great hunter players, right? Uh, Maris and Jinji, of course, being hunter mains for a very long time. Of course, they're multi-classers, but they have been maining hunter uh, on live servers for, long, for a long time. And Fragnance, of course, known to be an incredible good multi-classer, has been playing almost all classes on live servers, all DPS classes. So, uh, of course, no surprise that they're doing a, a lot of damage here. Perplex, of course, also keeping up with their Hunter DPS, but sometimes on the bosses you can really tell there's a small difference between those two. I mean, really the Hunters are kind of 
pretty even in damage across the board. The major difference is that now is doing about 13k more single target DPS on the on the Prot Warrior versus yeah. Divine Field right now. So got to keep an eye on that one. Definitely. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a pretty big gap in terms of damage when your tank is doing that much more damage than the other tank, right? It's pretty Might important in the grand scheme of things. Corruption setup. I'm not really yeah. sure. Let's take a look. Either way, um, I think ta like tanks have so much pressure in them to do well in these kind of M MDI environments because the number one importance is to survive the pools, of course. But the riskier they can play with their corruption setup and their essences and their just gear in general the more damage they can output and the faster they're gonna be in a dungeon. So the risk reward kind of thing that a tank has to think about uh, is really important for those keys, especially when you have such a close matchup between Method U and Perplex. The more offensive of a setup you can run, the faster you're gonna kill those bosses, as you can see uh, with the amount of damage that now can put out. And it is a difference in setup here. Uh, Divine Field opting to go for the versatility stacking with the percentage versatility as well as the surging vitality, so he has a ridiculous amount of versatility most of the time. Whereas now is opting to go for the Twilight Devastation Rank 3 with a couple of other smaller corruptions, usually an ineffable truth or percentage versatility as well. So it makes sense that now is pumping out more of that single target damage with Twilight Devastation procs. And that is slowly catching them back up in this dungeon as uh, Perplex is just gearing up for a massive pull, but they aren't pulling into the Shadow of Zul, which it looks like what we're seeing from Method EU. They're doing the same massive pull, but it looks like they're pulling it just into Shadow of Zul here. This is ridiculous. Wow. Okay, that's actually crazy. I don't think we have any other team uh, that pulled something on top of Shadow of Zul. Shadow of Zul is already such an incredible, difficult uh, mini boss to deal with because of the huge amount of damage that it does to those prod warriors. But uh, yeah, we see Method U not only doing the mini boss, but also just dealing with these, with the Beastmaster pack plus Raptor pack at the same time. You see how low now is dropping, and he has to use all of his defensives for this pull. Actually, not gonna have them available for the Awakened pull. Well, of course, the, the the Prot Warrior's major defensive ability here is gonna be that blue bar underneath the Monk Healer's health <laughs> bar. Once that depletes, you're in you're in danger. But with Shadow of Zul already dead for Method EU, the danger of your tank dying goes away the second that final little shadow debuff goes gone. And now that it's gone and the trash is dead, they're already on to King Dazar. While Perplexed is just now engaging Shadow of Zul, Method EU putting together that pull as well as dealing with the purification construct on Majemba has just catapulted them ahead in this dungeon right now. But of course, we are not even close to done yet because we have a 19 tyrannical King Dazar with four awakened mobs. Let's see how Method EU is planning on dealing with this. Wow, and we've talked about uh that there's probably not a lot of differences between those strategies, and there were not, except this one thing that Method U does, pulling everything on top of Shadow of Soul, uh, just gaining so much time, uh, probably close to 20, 30 seconds here compared to Perplex as they just now finished off that mini boss. And Method U dealing with these four awakened mobs, uh, we see uh, no dwarf racials actually on those hunters. That means they can't get rid of that debuff with the dwarf racial. They can uh, use their turtle once to get rid of it, and we saw Salia already use the revival to get rid of the other fear buff. And we see also the hunters just taunting off that spirit breaker cast from the tank buster. But you see the amount of damage coming in the ho on the whole group. I mean, but now is absolutely popping off. He is just getting Twilight Dev proc after Twilight Dev yeah. proc, even beating Miras on on this AOE pull here, and they are absolutely shredding through these awakened mobs. They only have the Blood of the Corruptor and the Breaker of Heroes left, and they've just made it look easy. This is ridiculous. But I got to keep an eye on Perplex now. They're not out of it yet. Any problems from Method EU, and they're right back in this. They are now dealing with that exact same pull, but you can already see the difference right now. Divine Field lagging far behind the Hunters in terms of that AOE damage. Yeah, and then, I mean, you do have the 5 seconds difference, right? So any more deaths at 10 to, to 20 seconds difference right now in boss CPS, I'd say. So any more trouble that Method you will have uh, might just be the one the one thing that Perplex needs to catch up here. They are almost done with their Awakened Mobs as well, but the Smock having a debuff dropping really low on their side did manage to dispel himself. But yeah, having some trouble on their side uh, as the... Divine Field going down, actually. This is going to be a huge disaster as they don't have an instant battle rest coming out. They need to use that engineering rest, which will take quite a while to cast. Did they get it off, though? They did get it off there. The Dark Fury coming out of that moment there was really useful for them. They were also able to pet taunt the Blood of the Corruptor, and Divine Field's able to accept the res. Wow. As long as he gets aggro and everything, they should be okay here in terms of overall wiping. They do have a battle res avail avail available for Wolf Disco if Swag is able to be healed up, and it looks like they're just barely able to get through. They'll be able to battle res Wolf Disco. 
But all this time, Method EU has been trucking through the rest of this boss here. They already have King Bizarre down to 20%. In, it is tyrannical, but there's nothing left to do. All they have to do is dodge those slow spears moving around the room. And Method EU, I don't know how they keep doing it, but they had a sub 20 minute run in time trials. They're gonna have a 20 minute and probably 15 second run here on live. They are absolutely ridiculous with how they play this game. That was almost perfection outside of that one random death in the middle of the dungeon. Uh, unbelievable from Method EU. Yeah, an incredible first game from Method U. They're going to be taking that victory in this best of three grand finals. You guys, they only need one more victory to take this entire tournament and send Perplex home, or not home, but, you know, out of the bracket, second place. And <laughs> they, <laughs> they, uh, they pull that off. They pulled off the four obelisks at the end there so cleanly, Tuttles. How is it that Method U is able to stay so consistent in these super tough series? I, I mean, the... The four obelisks was insane. What was even more insane to me was that trash pull in the shadow of Zul. I must admit, that is quite a scary thing to be able to uh, pull off, even though it is tyrannical. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's bolstering. If you accidentally get one stack of bolstering on shadow of Zul, you're just dead. If any of your hunters get hit by the cleave from the raptor, they just die too. Zalia normally needs to focus 100% of his healing into the tank on Shadow of Zul, so you're really reliant on your healers not taking any additional incidental damage. That was just, that was just perfection. Yeah, and you know, that is Shadow of Zul. It's a play where we've seen quite a bit of teams struggle on that last year. I think you guys remember that one tournament that I'm talking about. Why is it that Shadow of Zul is a, a, such a difficult, you know, little mini boss there before that last boss? Uh, uh, or or Tettles, whoever. <laughs> I mean, it um, just comes down to the tank that people are playing. Like, Yeah. Well, it just does do a lot of uh, magic damage, right? And mm -hmm. some tanks, um, they struggle with magic damage incoming because um, they might be really good at mitigating physical damage, which most trash mobs do and most bosses do uh, physical damage. You do have magic damage once in a while as well on other bosses slash trash pulls, but it only happens once in a while and then you can use your, the one mitigation you have for magic damage. But Shadow of Soul and some other bosses like Rixa Flux playing for example, they constantly do magic damage and at some point they just run out of mitigation. The only thing Proud Warrior really has is Spell Reflect that gives you a little bit of a DR, magic DR. And they have shield wall, of course, and some uh, HP amplifiers, but that's it. They just take the full magic damage without uh, too much mitigation, and that's why the amount of healing the healer needs to do, a uh, pump into the tank to stay alive, is just incredible. And a couple things I want to point out about that dungeon before we uh, do to talk about anything else. Two things. I, I want first. I want to talk about the confidence that Method EU has. We mm -hmm. we mistakenly said that they just hard resed uh, Genji when he died in that hallway before the council boss. They just used a battle res on him because it's a slightly slow, uh, faster cast time. I, I didn't even realize until I we were on the final either. boss, they, they had one less battle res available. They used a battle res cast, even though it's still a four second cast. Whereas what, what's what's a reawakened cast time? Six, seven seconds? You save two or three seconds Eight. by using the battle res there. But the amount of confidence, that, I mean, like, we don't need the battle res, just, yeah, just the use it. the implications of like, that if they end what? up meeting it down the line, which Who just shows that? Four seconds. Yeah, they actually they just did didn't that know. over. Four and then seconds. Also, the difference between the Twilight Dev versus the versatility setup and overall damage in that dungeon, on details at the end of the dungeon, now had done 97k overall DPS versus the 72k overall DPS of Divine Field. That's that's actually super significant. 25k overall DPS over the course of the dungeon is a pretty ridiculous stat. Mm -hmm. Definitely uh, looking good on King's Rest for Method EU in that first map. And uh, Tattles, before we move on to talk about Ateldazar, this next map, what do you have for us for the replay? I mean, I, I think both teams just look spectacular. Through the Golden Serpent, it was dead even. I think the biggest differentiator uh, between these two teams is uh, Method U actually playing the Purification Construct in a Machimba where Perplex elects to not to. Not to. Uh, then Perplex like, starts to build their own little bit of lead, but or Method U has a little bit ahead of an advantage in terms of count. Uh, then that begins to matter whenever Method E pulls that trash pack into Shadow of Zul. Perplex is doing a double trash pack pull at that point, where Method E is only doing one trash pack, so they can merge that with Shadow of Zul because only one pack with him is fairly doable, whereas two is just like pretty much uh, insane. So uh, both teams there had insane runs. Uh, Perplex and Method E, both of their death skips all the way into the Council of Tribes area. 
That, for people who don't understand how hard that is, is so wild to be able to pull off. All the hunters have to pop turtle. Uh, the the Mistreaver monks end up life cocooning themselves, and they're just like sprinting all the way down the hallway and just praying that they don't die, uh, pre-trapping mobs and stuff like that. The whole entire run from both teams was executed perfectly. Uh, and if you guys get, end up seeing a perfect run in a Taldazar again, oh, I just love a Taldazar whenever it's done to perfection. It just looks so sick. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Toldazar, as we've seen previously, is going to be fortified, skittish, and bursting. And this is definitely one of those matches where things can start to go very wrong. What are some of the difficulties, Ironic, that we're going to be facing off here in a Toldazar? I mean, I feel like this is a scary dungeon in general for the comp that Perplex likes to run here. We talked about it earlier in this tournament, both the times that they've run it. They don't run with either a misdirect or a tricks of the trade, so that so Divinefield has to do all the snapping pulls on his own with no help, which can be dangerous. And we've seen them lose to the seventh seed in Couch Pega, who, albeit was a pretty strong team, but you don't expect to see a two seed go down to a seven seed like that. And uh, we'll have to see if they're able to pull it off here. We will have to see indeed. It is Method EU versus Perplexed in the Grand Finals. Method EU only need one more victory to win this entire tournament. Here they go. What, what is Method EU right, doing? So using... We see a huge snaffle here by Method EU as they actually went to the right side, uh, grabbing all of that trash here. And then we saw the misdirect from Jinji onto now pulling Rasan and then the mobs uh, now immediately get snapped towards Rasan because he's the one having aggro and he takes all of this trash with him so interesting pull coming out of Method EU this is exactly uh, the one thing we've seen was last weekend right it was last weekend that we've seen this by Angry Toast I believe so yeah. well done by Method EU to just copy this strategy and make use of it themselves shout out to Angry Toast 10th seed of the first American slash Australian cup from last week showing that this particular type of pull was possible where you could snap a bunch of trash to the boss by misdirecting your tank to Razan after he's pulled trash. And, we, you know, we talked about this last week. We're like, I, I don't know. This is cool, but I don't know if we're going to use it. But Method EU putting it to work right here. The thing that this gains you when we talked about this last week, you get to use your bloodlust on a boss right away. Because, yeah. because of how quick a key Ataldazar is, if you save your bloodlust until about two minutes in, there's a chance that it might not be up when you engage Yasma with the awakened mobs at the end of the dungeon, which is what we're seeing perplexed to right now. They're saving that bloodlust until they, they engage uh, Priestess Alunza, which could be a problem for them. So Method EU being able to use that bloodlust in the pool is actually a pretty big gain here, and they'll still be able to go up and do that same massive AoE pack and just go, uh, go along the route that we normally see from most teams here. Yeah, okay, this is going to be such an interesting game now to watch, just because um, both of the teams are going to be in completely different areas of this dungeon now until the very end, until they reach Yasma, right? Because uh, they, co they chose a completely different route. We see the normal route, quote unquote, being played by Perplex as they go up the left side. They are on Pri Priestess Alunza now. They did manage to clear off all of this room here on top of Priestess Alunza. So very well done by them. They have not committed their bloodlust because of the very reason that Syro mentioned. Because of how fast uh, Atel is being played by these MDI teams. Fragment's actually going down here. They have some trouble with bursting. Did manage to, to um, recover for the rest of the teams, but uh, Fragment's releasing as well, it looks like. So they're going to lose a little bit of time waiting for him to come back. Yeah, some trouble here for Method U. And they're also just not going into the awakened realm. They're going to shadow meld past this trash instead. Oh. Also, not that big of a deal. They had to wait for Zelia's shadow meld to come off cooldown, so they didn't actually end up losing that much major time from that. He just came off cooldown as he hit it there, so they would have had to wait for it anyways. So the release and sure. run back wasn't that big of an issue. But uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm just really interested to see how close this is actually going to end up being. They will have the, the bloodlust up way sooner, and that's going to be a big advantage. This snap pull is an issue that we've seen from Perplexed earlier on in the tournament here. Let's see how it goes for them. The initial snap is down. They're able to deal with all the swords, and of course, once all those swords down, we're going to see the rest of the group drop down after the sanguine after sorry after the bursting is gone. Everything is snapped to the ground, and then they're going to finally engage with Rezon and cleave the rest of that trash on top of the boss. So snap number one for Perplexed, this important snap that they've, that they've kind of had problems with before, is down, and uh, they're looking pretty good so far. Yeah, and uh, what I wanted to mention with the Bloodlust, uh, just because um, Perplexed did not have a way of using the Bloodlust immediately on pool, they uh, just saved it. They said, okay, we need the, we need the Bloodlust on pool for the Awakened mobs 
later for Yasma, and therefore we're just not gonna use it at all, at all because we're gonna reach Yasma at around 10 minutes in the dungeon, so that's why they don't wanna use it immediately at the start. While Method Yu doing the snapping pull on Rasan, as you said, they might now just have an extra bloodlust, which really can be the difference in this, in this game. But Method Yu now down increases Alunsa, as Perplex is still on 46% on Razan. Slight trash difference here in favor of Perplex. Let's see what kind of snapping pull Method Yu is going to pull off. Now, of course, Perplex has already dealt with this trash pull that we're about to see in Method Yu pull off. Going for this pretty massive snap here. Let's see if they also get that center pull in on here. Looks like they're having an issue with the snap, though, as one of the honor guards has decided to go on down to Razan's room, where Razan, we know Razan isn't quite there yet, but it looks like he's actually been finally pulled back up to the tank here, re-snapped to the tank. But look at that honor guard. There's some issues there. He's not quite on top on top of the tank here. This is something that can happen with snap mobs. Yeah, the That's... field unfortunately went down here for Perplex. They did have a battle rest to get him back up immediately, so they should be able to recover. Well done by them, because having a tank go down on a boss fight, uh, you definitely need to react super quickly to use your defensives immediately to not have anyone else die. So well done by Perplex to recover here. Still, now the time is going to be equal between those two, both having one death five seconds on the board. Did, did one of the DKs just jump off? I think Mira just fell off the platform. Dead. Yeah, he definitely just jumped off. A hundred percent. Look at his health. He took fall damage. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's going on, Miraz? <laughs> My man, what's, what's there, happening? There's a sword pack, right? And he needs to jump around the sword pack now. Uh, it will cost him quite oh, a bit of time. Oh, can he get it? One oh, down? He, can he... They're going to have to pull that sword pack this? to let him by. They're going to have yeah. to pull that sword pack. There it is. They're going to misdirect that sword pack with a skyscraper, get everything snapped together with the middle pull. This is a massive pull, and he will just now join the group. Not that big of a time loss, but I mean, <laughs> that's that d has allowed Perplex to catch up to the point in the dungeon. But unfortunately, Swag has gone down for Perplex. They don't have a battle rose available for him. He'll have to run back now, and he, he might have the same issue. Uh, he might have to get past that sword pack. Now, he has a better class to deal with. The Demon Hunters do have a lot more mobility. He'll be able to double jump around, glide, fell rush to get back with the group. But he is gaining all these bursting stacks out of range of the healer. The Netherwalk has popped, but he's going to go down whenever that the entire group's going to go down, down actually. <laughs> That's a full team wipe for Perplex. Yeah. This is a very, this is actually the exact same thing, uh, thing that happened to them the last time as well. They did have already a wipe on this snapping pool. To be fair, the last time they wiped because um, someone ripped the aggro and then they jumped and killed them. And this time we had Swag go down again, which could have been aggro as well, right? It is skittish and they do not have a rogue or a hunter for the misdirects. So right. having the Demon Hunter rip aggro can easily happen and uh, someone going down can cause so many issues as you've seen just causing a huge uh, full team wipe for them. Now Method you definitely in the lead as they're 100% trash now. All they have to do left is Volkal and Yasma and this basically means that they're going to be kiting the Awakened mobs as they already have 100% trash HP. And I mean that could have just been a cascading effect where they might have even like committed they they probably would use this darkness there at that point to help them heal through probably, yeah. through that massive bursting stack because they were at 16 bursting stacks there although yeah. at the end they might have just said you know what we're probably dead anyways just kill what we can but that's usually not something you you want to do right bursting if it just blocks one tick sorry darkness if it just blocks one tick of bursting it can save a person's life so him not being there was even worse than what it, it might have initially seemed method you now on to vocal already with these all of these totems down below 30 percent let's see if they can execute properly and not let them heal it looks like they're all low enough to the point where they can start killing them off and we shouldn't have any totem heals coming out of method you yep perfect once again moving on to the second phase and uh i'm Pretty sure Method U hasn't yet pulled an obelisk this dungeon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be kiting them. Oh because yeah, they have for 100 sure. percent enemy forces. Uh, so I very highly doubt they've miscounted their trash, and they're just gonna overkill the wake em ups. Now, one thing to note as well about their bloodlust now, the fact that they're cutting the mobs means they don't need the bloodlust on pull of the last boss, right? So uh, this is also something that is in the favor of the kiting strat here specifically for Ateldasar. Because if you're not if you don't have to deal with the wake em ups, if your healer is kiting them, you don't need the bloodlust. You can just use it later in the fight. You don't have to use it on pull and just get the extra usage and get the extra damage that Bloodlust provides. While Perplex on the other hand still holding on to their Bloodlust, of course, they haven't used it all dungeon long just because uh, they probably are dealing with those Awaken Muffs in the last boss, so they need the Bloodlust for that pull. How fast is this going to be? Because if they aren't really killing any fast. of the Awaken Mobs and they're actually just full kiting everything, I, I, 
the like bloodlust will come minutes? up at it'll come up 11? at some point on Yasma, right? For sure. Yeah, it will come up at some point. But this is I this is so ridiculously fat. I don't know where you can improve the strategy at all from this. Like this has to be just the way to do a Taldazar at this point, right? I think so. I mean, you also got to think about they they lost quite a bit of time with Maris falling off, True. and they had uh, a death as well. Fragments releasing the shadow melt wasn't ready of Celia. They had to wait. So if they would have optimized that as well, it would be even quicker. It would be even like thirty seconds quicker approximately. So this is an incredible strategy coming out of Method U, as they now have to wait for this RP to start. Now, there's still things that can go wrong, right? We've seen this kiting strategy being done by teams before, even by Method U, and it, so many things can go wrong. I mean, the healer can go down, we can have the wake em ups sm um, snap back to the group or snap to the healer and kill him. So let's see what Zelia does here to be able to kite these mobs. Yep, let's see how they actually get up, set it up here. Looks like all the melee DPS are going to go into this corner here where we're going to misdirect from Jinji on top of, uh, yeah, on, onto uh, Zelia, and off Zelia goes to the races. We're going to get a nice little POV of him running around in circles for probably about a solid minute here. Now, of course, he is going to paralyze that one first uh, soul, soul mob, soul rend mob from Yasma so that he doesn't have to worry about that getting anywhere near the boss for the next minute, and uh, it shouldn't be an issue for the entire group, of course. We're gonna have a nice little line a line from him for the entire duration of his kiting because of that. Bloodlust is now popped for Method EU. We see the army that is coming out from both DKs, and Yasma's about to get melted. Yeah, I mean, if they don't have to focus their strength on any of those awakened mobs, they can just focus on uh, putting all of the damage into Yasma. You see how much, uh, how fast it drops, especially with that Bloodlust available. And yeah, look up far Zelia already went with those awaken mobs. The only thing Zelia really needs to take care of is to not go on any spot that snaps the mob to him. That yep. is very deadly. And the other thing is to not walk too far away from some of these mobs because they're casting a lot. Like, for example, the Tank Breaker, which constantly casts the Dark Hero and the Spirit Breaker. And you see, he set, his, he set up his Transcendence on the stairs there so that he can port back once all of the mobs are at the top of the stairs, and that'll give him plenty of room to kite back down. But Yasma already down below 20%. As long as Zelia stays alive, this is going to be Method EU taking the second tournament of the year. That, that crippling debuff has gone on to Zelia, and he hasn't dispelled it quite yet. But once that's gone, he'll be fine, and it looks like he's going to be fine. Mind, healing himself back up to full here as Yasma drops below 10%. He has to wait for the final flame vent, but once that's gone, he is in the clear. And with Yasma below 5%, Method EU will be claiming a dominant victory once again, just going through the upper bracket, not losing to anyone, and taking our second cup of the year. Man, Method EU, what a dominating performance. What a dominating performance indeed. Method EU has two owed Perplex in the grand finals. Perplex has played really strong.